So I fought the opening battle on Troy, and it was a flawless victory where we retained all of our strength. So that dared me to proceed and see just what can be pulled off on turn one. So we're basically at full Achilles complement. We replenished all of our losses, all four of them, and Achilles is still nearly at full health. And this presents a nice opportunity to the player because if you can overcome this initial army, you are granted a follow-up fight. It opens up to you because Elopes, I think that's how you pronounce it, because it's Elopean for his faction, so Elopes is standing outside his town, and if you attack him, that'll bring the garrison out to reinforce the fight. So, if you've watched my Shogun 2 videos, you'll know that I really like attacking a small contingent outside of town to lure the garrison out. So that's what I'm going to do here. But first I'm going through the menu system because I want to make the most of this campaign here. So you can challenge all of these heroes in this order. So there was one that was odd, then one that was intimidated, and this last one is insolent. And if you challenge them in that order, after winning, after winning that fight at the outset of the campaign, then you can get a good outcome for all of those challenges. And then I'm getting the prayer to Ares for the reduced morale. Maybe I should have done that at the very outset of the campaign, the first thing I did. If that applies immediately, that is, then it could have helped. And then I'm going for light infantry because I am very fond of mobility and being able to outmaneuver in this game, so I just intuitively go for light infantry. But I do want to acknowledge that heavy infantry standing their ground in favourable circumstances even on legendary difficulty, they perform really well. They do as well as you could hope in that task of standing their ground, defeating less well-equipped lighter units that dare to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Because every time I've used Champions of Thea like that, they've performed well. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to fight this one more conventionally because I'm going to be ending turn after this fight, we're out of movement, so all we need to do is get a clean victory, so I've bought myself this opportunity with my really sweaty initial fight, and now I have a fair shot at a conventional fight. So I'm going to fight one. I've got experienced Aegean runners, I've got experienced Aegean javelinmen, I was saying Aegean, but it might be Aegean. I prefer the sound of Aegean because that fits with Aegean and other pronunciations. I don't know. Maybe that's not how it's pronounced though. Alright, so what I'm doing here is putting these Champions of Thea up against impassable terrain. That's what I'm going for. So there's Elopes, the and here's the reinforcements, reinforcements. with Crithius, I think. And I've got a lot of trees here, and there's an open space in the middle, and I'm leading with Achilles, and they have a lot of units there. They've got slingers, they've got archers, they've got a lot of islanders, which I think are club troops. So they've got spears and clubs. Definitely vastly outnumbered here. But thankfully, the initial army doesn't try to join in. And do I get a chance, I'm trying to remember, do I get a chance to stand my ground? Yeah, I do. It's coming back to me. So I'm going to be able to do it, I'm going to funnel them with an obstruction to one side. Is under so all I need to do is worry about the right then, for these champions. So this is great for these heavy infantry. Heavy infantry in this game seem to do well to hold their ground against inferior less well-equipped lighter troops. At least here, early game, with these Champions of Thea. But they do take 
damage really quickly to skirmishers and I'm trying to do something about that. I'm pulling back, I'm letting units fall upon my heavy infantry head on and they've not taken much damage so this is what you really want with these units. You want them to be at full health when the melee starts and to have all of the units that they're fighting hit them from the front and they will stand and do well. And you can see the morale dropping and these units taking a lot of damage. And I'm taking losses on my Champions of Thea, but it's acceptable. We're doing a hell of a lot of damage there and Achilles is in the middle of it. And there's a unit of clubs that's gotten behind and I'm trying to deal with them and I'm also trying to get my swordsmen and my Aegean runners to chase down the skirmishers. No wait, my my swordsmen and my javelinmen are on the right there. So I've got swords closing the distance and my javelins are in a flanking position lobbing into the back of these blobbed units. And my champions of Thea have only taken 10 casualties so far and the clubs that flanked are gone. And I'm bringing my spearmen round, my young spears, because I want to be using their charge bonus. So I'm letting the faster Aegean runners chase down those clubs to make sure they hopefully don't come back and then I'm going to be charge cycling with my young spears and I've caught the slingers and there's a routing unit of swords there that I've got to worry about so I need to start taking out these skirmishers so I can focus on this blob but this is a really well managed fight so far alright so I'm charge cycling my young spears taking 10 losses but they got a charge and are they, f are they pursuing? No, they're not, they can't. Alright, so the archers are firing at my Aegean runners. And that's annoying me, I need to really close distance with them and get them. And they've got sword skirmishers lobbing Pila. And that is really annoying, that did not want to deal with that. So I need to pull out now. I need to run away from that. Yeah, I hate when these units come back. They really do this a lot in this game. And I've only taken 14 losses on my Champions of Thea. See how well they're holding against these crap units. Very nice. Clubs do not have good armor piercing. In this game, blunt heavy weapons that don't rely on penetration do nothing against armor. It's weird. The point of armor is that it can't be penetrated, but weapons that rely on penetration are good against armor. <laughs> oh man. But if you get heavy clubs like the giant club, you know the the mythical units, the giants, those guys have clubs that are big enough to get through armor. Yeah, it's confusing. Slingers don't do anything to armor either. And I'm getting charged in the back there, but they might break before they hit the line. And I've, I've turned on them with the young spears, and I think they're gone. Achilles is fighting them as well. Yeah, they're gone. They just broke. So that's it. We routed everything here. So now it's just a mop-up. So that's the initial fight. And we are well over half strength on every unit. So these are quite well distributed light losses. So we're doing well here. Not much stands in the way of taking the first town. What's it called again? Hestea? Yeah, so once we take Hestea, the Elipians, the main antagonists, the initial antagonists of Achilles, are going to be really pushed back on the back foot. And that's three provinces that you hold as Achilles on turn one. And possibly set up well to push on and has no more ammunition. take their last province. So, at the start of the game, Achilles and the Elipians both have two, two regions each, two provinces each. They have a main city and a secondary county. And if you handle turn one perfectly, you can emerge with their city and a good platform to push and take their last remaining territory 
and then that's the LPNs wiped out. So you can basically set up the LPNs to be wiped out on the first turn. Not bad. And if you want to use this save to proceed, I will post it on my Discord so you can get the save on my Discord and play on from there if you want to. Or you can attempt this on your own, which is what I would encourage. It's quite satisfying to play through a Total War campaign with this kind of mindset. A mindset of do everything right, do not accept any fuck ups, and see just how far you can push the game and what interesting things can happen if you do that. Alright, so we've got the two heroes. So the hero that emerged to reinforce Cretheus, he is up there with Elopes. So we've got two heroes to deal with, and that one has a bow, and he's got really good range, and he's got armor piercing, and he can snipe Achilles, which sucks. And we've got Aristea. So Achilles was stuck in the melee for long enough that he's got Aristea, which heals. So that's like a 1000 hit point heal that also has combat buffs. So you want to activate that at the outset of the toughest fight and you'll be getting healed passively and have bonuses to armor and damage that you'll be inflicting on the hero you're fighting and you can only get it once per battle so you get an opportunity every battle to heal a thousand hit points so you can preserve your momentum if you fight battles perfectly and with Achilles, I recuperated most of the damage in the first battle because we entered this fight with three quarters health around there. And that's because we regenerated about a third or a half of the damage we took with Aristea in the last fight. I think I activated it accidentally because of the keybinds. But yeah, you can. If you pace your fights, then you can use fights as an opportunity to heal. So if you rest your hero and give them situations where they're not taking damage, so harassment, then they'll actually end the fight with more health than they started it. Possibly up to a thousand hit points. So it's 25 hit points per second for 60 seconds. So that's, wait a minute. 60 times 25, Let's so it's this. You're not up to this. 100, 1, 1,500 hit points. So you can actually regenerate 1,500 hit points per fight. And I just did it there. So I'm in a, a duel with two heroes focusing on the weaker archer. Or no, I'm not anymore. Yeah, alright, I'm taking the fight against the melee guy with the club. And I've got... Aristea activated. I think that has a similar etymology as arete, which means virtue or excellence. Yeah, that's going back to Plato and Aristotle and Eudaimonia and all that. Those Greek terms. That overlaps a lot with all of this influenced. That influenced. Homer's Iliad influenced Aristotle and Plato, so it would make sense. And yeah, Achilles should win that fight comfortably, but he will take a lot of damage from it. But there's not really any other way to effectively deal with these heroes. Maybe if you turn off skirmish on javelins and then run up and point blank volley directly into these heroes, so save your ammo, that may work. And I just got charged there, god damn it, that was a mistake, because I forgot to have skirmish on. So I just took some damage and a few losses, completely unnecessarily. And these are young spears, so that's an opportunity to take them out, because I separated them from the skirmishers. They've got a unit of javelins there, in addition to elops, so I need to be wary of this ranged damage. I think I just took some losses on my Theans, my champions there, possibly. 
and I've got a really nice situation here now where these young spears are totally surrounded and I can choose which unit I want to lead the charge and possibly negate all damage and all threat. And yeah, look at that. The morale is gone. Yeah, nice. So that was a free unit there because I pulled them away. And now it's just this duo with Achilles against Cretheus. The archer, Elops, and the javelins, which are just watching. And then we're done. And we're doing a really thorough mop-up. In this fight, I managed to catch, I think, every unit. I think only the slingers made it away, only some of them. Yeah, I took four losses there in that fight with the young spears, I think. I got 83 and I had 87 a minute ago. But this is a really good fight. The damage is still light on every unit. And, well, Achilles is looking dodgy. And yeah, look at that, that fucking archer. He can skewer. He fires a ballista out that bow. And he can really skewer your units. And I'm taking the charge now. So these are light swordsmen. They are experts in flanking and they've got shields. But they don't actually do very well in a head-on fight. It's disappointing. That is when the hidden combat modifiers become really apparent. With heavy infantry against these really, really bad units, they do perform really well, and they do the task that they're assigned of blobbing units and pinning them and holding them there while you manoeuvre and work your magic. But when you're doing these medium infantry, like light swords, or light infantry is that? Are they light infantry? I think they are. Well, yeah, they are light, but they have shields and swords, so they should do well in a melee. But they don't. They don't do well in a melee. What light swords need to do is basically the role of Aegean runners. They have to flank, and they have to get flank charges into unaware units. Otherwise, they're pretty much useless. They haven't done particularly well at chasing down skirmishers in this fight. They haven't done well at anything. But they should have. I've given them good situations. So that's where the hidden combat modifiers become un annoying. Because I'm just... Whenever I'm thinking about my light swordsmen, which should be a respectable unit, that have a lot of situations that you can use them in, I'm just thinking, nah, they're not going to do well. I need to just... I need to coddle them and make sure they don't take losses. And this guy should route now. So I've I've got this guy routed, Elops, yep, he's done. And these javelin throwers. Yeah, they just routed as well. And that's it. So that's good. That was a really decent win. And I did it conventionally. Cause I could afford to. I could have probably figured out a way to grind this one out and take two losses again. But I don't need to because we're about to end turn and get replenishment, and on top of the immediate replenishment from clicking replenish for this fight. So we're going to be at full hit points next turn, which is when we'll be able to move out again and push on to this guy, or push on to take his last town after he's dead. His faction lives on I think, but he dies, and I've nearly caught him. I keep using vanquish to get speed, and then Achilles lunges and then he runs away and I've got to wait until I can vanquish again and catch him and stab him in the back again. <laughs> and he's gonna make it out. He runs off the map with barely any hit points. And that's it. Heroic victory! That is the first time I think that I've gotten a heroic victory in Troy. And that really was a heroic victory. We were totally outmatched. Totally a number two to one. Yeah, about 2 to 1. And we wiped the floor with them. Very light losses. 10 to 1 or 9 to 1 KD with a conventional fight. And we got gold for that. So do you get gold for heroics? Or do you get gold for all fights? Or how does that work? I am unstoppable. Yeah, Elops ran away. And that was the guy that rejected the duel. So Elops just lost in a heroic victory. Achilles 
and Achilles actually really is undisputed as the champion of the world. Achilles the champion. Yeah. And the mood swings. Bring their deaths. One of those mood swings is super overpowered. And it gives combat bonuses to your units. Kill them all. And all resolve against only the slingers, 50 of them I think. And we take no losses, do we? How many losses? Oh, what the fuck, we did take some losses. <laughs> we took half as many losses as we did in the last fight, Jesus fucking... Oh man. But we got gold again. And occupy Hysteria on turn one. And there is basically a fully optimized perfect turn one as Achilles. And yeah, you can get the save in my Discord and continue this. I might continue it. I don't know. This is like a playthrough at this point. A commentated analytical playthrough. Grants extra unit for recruitment and reduced upkeep, living legend. So that's a really powerful buff. And yeah, basically full replenishment. And look at all of these buffs. And I'm rank 3 now. And I just got the speed bonus. And look at all of these buffs. God damn. Minus 10% to morale of all enemy units in the region. Minus 5% to the morale of all enemy units in the region. So we are stacking morale malices on turn 1. Good start. And the records is nice. It, it's almost like it lets you track the events around every character. Or around Achilles at least. Turn 1. Alright, thanks for watching and see you next time, everyone. Do you want me to continue this series? Let me know. And maybe there are even more moves that can be made. I have a Patreon page for if you like the videos enough to want to support their production. Special thanks to Matteo Olivetti, Nerdington, The Rode 451, Halcyon, William Ballangari, and Robert Sparks.